Welcome to this week's episode of Eye of the Swarm, season premiere episode of Eye of the Swarm, episode number one of season number six. Your deep dive into anything and everything Yellow Jacket Athletics. He's the big sound, Matt Johnson. I am John Garver in six seasons. Coming up on 100 what episodes What in the world? <laughs> I think we're upper 80s. This might be 88 or 89 total. Well, So we could cross that line this year. Well, hopefully. All, all, if all goes well, yes. <laughs> that's uh, that's the goal, I think. Um, but, yeah, eight, six years I've been doing this. I, when we started, I wasn't quite sure where we were going to go. Right. But now here we are, six mm-hmm. years later, doing the same thing. So well, and, and On video now. Yeah, and on video now. This so is this year two of the video. Yeah, year two of the video. Of the thing. video stream. Yeah, exactly. For, for the guys that have faces for radio. Um, <laughs> you know what, though? I, I do look forward to doing them. They're mm-hmm. fun. Uh, we do a lot of cool stuff with our podcast. I don't know if everyone understands, like, um, you know, the commitment that it takes to, to put something like this together. But um, the reason why we keep doing this is because uh, we like doing it, and people seem to like us doing it. Yeah, so. and, and things keep happening, so yep, yep. somebody's got to be here to talk yeah, about it. the sports world stops for nobody, so that's the only reason why we're, why we're back. How was the summer vacation for you? Uh, I didn't really have one. Oh. I spent a lot of time just working. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was okay. I mean, there was, there were some things that, uh, you know, that I would have changed, I think, had I had the opportunity and that's a long drawn out sad tale and I'm not going to get into it here, but, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it was okay. I mean, it, it was a grind though at times, yeah. you know, uh, uh, the same things that are happening across the, the country are happening, of course, in Duluth and Superior in terms of employment stuff. And so I, I had a couple of, uh, there've been a couple of instances where work got a little stressful, Yep. but, um, overall, you know, it's about the same. But uh, now I've got some seniority, which is nice at all, all my jobs. So <laughs> that helps. That helps because now, uh, you know, you can kind of um, you can kind of voice your opinion a little bit more freely. I'll just say that, and I'm not going to get down the rabbit hole here. But, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, it was it was another summer. Uh, weather really messed with my allergies. I don't know if you had the same, same problem. Like, same. I, like, that was kind of also a big, like, subplot to my summer. Yep. <laughs> uh, my sinuses have been terrible. Yeah. I don't know if yours have been really bad, but mine <laughs> have been really horrible, bad. Not horrible, but... They let me know they're there. Once well, in a while. and you and I had talked about this a little because it was so humid. Yeah, it's been so humid. Um, and today being another one. Yeah, another really another humid sticky day. day. Another sticky day. So we yeah we had our fair share. Uh, but other than that, uh, you know, another summer. What about you? It went quickly. Yeah, and that's the other thing. It, it goes fast. It, it yeah. went very quickly. Um, I I feel like we just I was just sitting on the stage reading names at commencement, and that was almost. Four months ago now. Right, right. It went very, very quickly. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's usually what happens. I think it, it goes even quicker when you have a toddler. Mm, yeah. Because he's always on the go, and there's always something happening with him. So it made it go really, really fast. Yeah. So it, I, I feel like it was gone in a blink. Yeah. All of a sudden, we had a bunch of home games, too. Yeah. Like, which we usually do not have. Dynamite segue, Matt. Dynamite yeah, segue. I know. I was about to say, well, that was part of what kind of was sped it up for me, I think. Because usually it's like you kind of like, let's say the athletes report, you know, for preseason in the middle Mid-August, of August. Yeah. yeah. You and go through the eligibility and all that. Yeah, exactly. And then, exactly. Like and then usually later, there was a game. <laughs> yeah. And then there's like, there's usually like a, 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 a time frame there where, okay, so they're getting ready. Usually they have a couple of like road games to start or, you know, a tournament away or something like that. And volleyball did have one. Mm-hmm. But this year, for whatever reason, it just lined up that we had a whole slew of home games at the start of the year for everybody. Yep. And so that, it was, it was kind of like, you know, hit, getting hit in the face with a towel. It was sort of like, wow, this accelerated really quickly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but it was stressful. I know on your end it was very stressful. Um, not necessarily as stressful for me, but uh, we've made some changes, <laughs> shall we say, to our broadcast deliveries. So um, we'll talk, I'm sure, more about that as mm-hmm. we go along here, uh, maybe even in this podcast. We'll definitely talk about it. It's going to happen in this podcast. Yeah, yes. yeah. But, uh, you know, it, there's been some stuff that uh, – that, I know that the athletic department and you and I have had to adapt to in terms of changes, mm-hmm. not necessarily in how we broadcast, but in our delivery of broadcast, right? Like how we deliver them. So uh, that also made things more interesting because mm-hmm. not only did we have a slew of home games that we did have to broadcast and did have to bring and, you know, did have to do all that stuff. We also had to test out our new delivery systems. Yep. And for the most part, I think that went pretty well. Just from my perspective, we had a few hiccups, but um, when you have all that together, it just sort of explodes on you, and you're like, whoa, this is a lot. <laughs> I think you described it as it was going to be kind of a circus-like atmosphere there for yeah, a Yeah, for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, for a little bit. But I think we worked it out pretty well, at least for now. For now. For now, we've got it. E- yeah. Every day will bring something new. Yeah, yeah. With the loon delivery system, and I keep talking about it, um, yeah, there'll be some some more hiccups, I'm sure, down the road. Mm-hmm. But for right now, <laughs> I think we're okay. We're doing okay. We're doing okay. Well, let's, let's talk about it a little bit because we uh, – 
had a whole bunch of things happen over we the, did. the cor- we did. course of these first couple of weeks. We did. Um, you know, it's hard to go through all of it because there was a ton of it. There, <laughs> volleyball had two tournaments. Volleyball had two tournaments, one at home, one away. Um, but away, f- away being in Texas. Yeah, in Texas, so a long way away. Um, went 4 0 down there, came back, split two, uh, or split four. One went two and two at the Stringer Classic. So that was. I think there were kind of mixed reviews mm-hmm. from how they played down uh, in that tournament. Had some good teams come in. You know, Hamlin came in from the Mayak to play in it. Saints Glasgow, of course. Uh, Mary Harden Baylor. Mary Harden Baylor made the trip from Texas, that, that, so that's they something you the don't favor. see every year. No, no. Uh, Martin Luther was also in the tournament. Uh, Marion came over from Fond du Lac. So um, yeah. it was a good field. Yeah, it was a good field. It was a good field. There was some good competition there. But uh, six and two to start the year. Two straight uh, defensive player of the weeks for Jenna Anderson. So mm-hmm. congratulations to her. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so, and they have another tournament coming up. I think they're in St. Paul. They're at McAllister this yeah, weekend. Yeah, they're, they're in St. Paul at the McAllister invite. And they'll have four tough matches down there. All yeah. those teams are pretty no good. Doubt. So, no yeah, doubt. No, I saw on the schedule. That'll be Friday Friday, Saturday. Saturday. Okay. Uh, going to the soccer side of things, this is the most rigorous, I think, non-conference <laughs> slate that I've seen. Definitely for the women, possibly for the men. Without a doubt for the women. Yeah. That she... She's not shying away from anything. No. no hiding this year. No, no, and she's she's playing anybody and everybody. Uh, you I mean, know, five and matches in and yeah. three WIAC opponents, and two, two and two three Mayak to start. Opponents. And I think the thing that is going to help them down the line is that these teams play distinctive styles. You know, they played like I said, two Mayaks or two WIACs, three WIACs, three WIACs, three WIACs, and two Mayaks to start. So you're you're you know playing against the two best pride conferences in the Midwest, um, and have gave a pretty good accounting of yourself. In all those matches, uh, lacrosse starting out the year, that was more of just that a, was kind of an impressive team, though. Yeah, they're really, really good. Wow, um, they're they're you know I mean that's a team that is a top legitimate national title contender. They probably have, if I look at their team, there's probably 15 or 16 players on that team that can play on any given day. Uh, they bring back they brought back like nine or ten of their starters from last year. Last year's team lost one game all of last year. Um, their last one. Yeah, their last one. Um, it was a team actually the Yellow Jackets saw last year in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Um, and then you bring back nine stars out of 11 and a couple of all-conference, first-team all-conference midfielders. Um, the one player that they did lose was their their top striker, but they did bring back just about everybody else. Um, that's going to be a team that's going to make a run for sure, no question about it. I thought it was interesting, too, how last year in the NCAA tournament, they lost that match 1-0. One, one yeah. This year it's 5-0. Right. This year's match was a better match. Yeah, they played a better game. I, I thought, thought it was interesting year. how you said that. It was a de- it was a it was kind of a deceiving five nothing score in some ways, simply because lacrosse scored their goals in bunches. They yeah. scored three or I think three of their five in the first half within like a ten minute period. Yeah, or something I think like that. three within the first fifteen minutes. I yeah, think and then the second half two in the first ten. Yeah, and then after that it was I don't I want to say it was even because it wasn't. I mean they had the, the advantage of play, but. We created some chances of our own. We ended up getting off uh, eight or nine shots, had some really good opportunities. Had a chance to score a couple of goals in that mm-hmm. game. So I think that kind of set the tone, came back uh, next time out against River Falls, came from behind and beat them. That's a good win. Yep. Uh, River Falls was 4-1, and one, or their lone losses to us, so that's good. Um, then beats Glassica again, 2-0. Uh, that was a well-played game, I thought. Uh, we're in control basically from the start. Yeah. Um, and then played uh, Platteville and Gustavus back to back, which was a real interesting double dip. Uh, lost both games, two to one to Platteville and one nothing against Gustavus, but they play completely different styles. Um, Platteville is not a possession really based team; they're big, physical, um, play kind of a funky style. They, they were big, yeah, very big. They were big, big and physical. Yep. Uh, play for set pieces, long throws, and then they try to keep everything pretty much compact defensively. That's sort of how they play. Gustavus was really skilled. Uh, played a lot of one and two touch passing, so they were completely changed up from Platteville. Not very big physically, Gustavus, but they were very quick mm-hmm. and they moved the ball back side to side. And those are those different kind of styles that you're going to see because um, they had, they were not big. No, they were not big at all, <laughs> but they were they were very game. skilled and yeah. they were very very good on the ball. Yeah. Um, and so you're you're seeing different kind of styles. And you know, UWS I thought accounted themselves pretty well. They're I know they were frustrated with the Platteville game specifically just because they felt like that was a game that they probably like get away from uh the Gustavus game Gustavus is a tough matchup because of how they play mm-hmm. and because of how skilled they are because they do like I said a lot of triangle and one two touch passing um and they're right on with their touches um you know, the most complete team obviously was across mm-hmm. but you know getting wins against River Falls getting a win against St. Glasgow again sitting at two and three they have another uh, uh non-conference road game coming up against Concordia on Saturday you know they'll, they'll they've given a good account of themselves and they've established why they are the favorites sure. in the UMAC again and 
this is the kind of stuff though that coach the girl wants them to have to face right. because she wants them to have to you know dig deep a little bit and see what else is out there because this is what a, at the in the end it's yeah. going to serve them well yeah exactly and and they'll be more than ready for conference yeah um, they're not home again until next Wednesday Wednesday but uh, yeah going long term this is what she was looking for um, and they still have a couple of non conference games against St Olaf and McAllister coming up down the road so. Non-conference schedule is, is, is a bear. It's but, rugged. Yeah, it's a rugged one. But, uh, you know, I, I don't think she's disappointed overall with, with how the team has played. Right. Men have done the same thing. Yep. Really, really loaded up. Um, played, you know, started out the year uh, with a scoreless draw against Augsburg. Then had – That's always a good match. Yeah. And I told you, that Augsburg team is good. Uh, came back, had a scoreless draw with the number 21 ranked team in the country, Carlton. They were a little hard done in that one. Probably could have uh, – you know, come out there with a result, really played well, had hit a couple of posts, had a couple of goals, ruled on a, you know, overruled on an offside call. Um, you know, it is what it is. You end up out shooting them, though, 21 to 7, and you don't get the win, you feel kind of bad. Right. Came back against Platteville, didn't play as well. Uh, finally scored a goal. Yep. Struggling offensively a little bit. Uh, finally scored a goal, but ended up giving up the game winner on a bad deflection. Uh, a little bit lucky for the Pioneers, yeah, and they yep. win two to one. And then yesterday against Alaska, they went over across the bridge and took care of business pretty well. Mm-hmm. Uh, beat them five one. Got goals from five different guys, and so um, you know one one and two is their record. They're going to be uh, at Eau Claire on Saturday before they start. Uh, Tough matchup. Yep, yeah, that's uh, you know the, the Blue Golds are a good squad. They're in the top, you know, top twenty like program. Um, so that'll be that that'll be a, a good one too. So both teams have really pushed themselves to start the year, mm-hmm. um, and like I said, they've. You know, it hasn't been smooth sailing for either team, uh, but that's not what these games are really about. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, exactly. That's fine. And I, this know, is about the long game right now. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, once they get in the conference season, of course, both teams are heavy favorites to win again, and they should. So, um, you know, as long as they're ready to go uh, come conference season and, and knowing what else is out there, it'll serve them, like you said, well, you know, once we get into the postseason and all mm-hmm. that good stuff. Yeah. Um, Men's golf won the uh, Twin Ports. What is it? The Twin Collegiate? Ports Collegiate. Collegiate, yeah. Uh, for the is that the second, second year? year in a row? Yeah. Second year in a row. And second Connor year. Willard, Mellis, second year in a row. Second year in a row, and reigning a UMAC Men's Player of the Week. So, congratulations to him. Women placed fifth, 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 and we're uh, led by uh, a couple players and Olivia Weinberg and mm-hmm. Ashton Parnell. Yep. Uh, should also be mentioned that Andrew Root actually finished in a tie for first right. with his teammate Willard won Connor a playoff. Willard, and, and Willard won the medalist in a playoff with his teammates. So actually shot four strokes better than he did winning the event last year. No, oh, yeah, so, so shaved a few more off. Right, yep. So that uh, that took place uh, over the weekend. Um, men's and women's cross country. Both teams ran in uh, at the Tony St. Pierre, mm-hmm. which is an event that is hosted by jointly by St. John's and St. Benedict. Yep. Uh, over in St. Cloud, and uh, the men, I think, placed, what, f- fourth. Fourth. And the women were fifth. Women were fifth. But the big news there, Simone Stevens came in fourth individually. Right. And was She named, had a race. She did. Zach Reese for the Yellow Jackets led the men. Both of them were named the UMAC Runners of the Week, or Athletes of the Week for mm-hmm. cross-country, so congratulations to them. But she was fourth overall in the entire field. Every single runner PR'd. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> So we'll take that. When, when Glenn sent me that note and said every 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 runner, both sides, men's and women's, wow. every one of them. So they they look like they might be primed then to uh, to win another conference crown. They're both favorites again to win. Yep. This year, and uh, so you know they had a, they had a good solid start to the year, and women's tennis also had a good solid start. They did. I played an exhibition match against uh, Winona on Saturday. Is that one? Yep. Was? Saturday. Okay. And then it got things going for real against the River Falls on Sunday and beat the Falcons six to one. Yeah. So. Uh, that's two straight years now where they've beaten River Falls. Yeah, and uh, early in the pre- in the preseason. So. Yeah, and that, that women's team looks good. Yeah, you know his I know, his, yeah. his top four, really good, really good. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's going to be fun to watch how yeah. how they they build on the the history of last season right. with the, the the conference championship and the the number of of victories and everything. It'll be fun to watch how yeah. they, they build yeah, so as the year goes on. We'll see uh, what that all leads up to, but. Uh, Pretty strong start for everybody, really. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, the men's and women's soccer records are deceiving because of how tough their non-conference has been. Yep. Volleyball at 6-2. and two. Uh, You know, men's golf has already run an event. Uh, women's golf is is improving, I think, you know, mm-hmm. slowly but surely. But they're, they're You know, we'll steps. learn a little bit about them today as we record this on Thursday because yeah. the UMAC preview happening today. Yeah, the UMAC today. preview is happening today, so we'll find out where they're at. I think the men will be the favorite probably to win the I would, UMAC yeah, again. Yeah, I would imagine. Um, <clears throat> and the women will see where they, where they place at the end of today's events. Um, 
cross country both look like they're they're doing pretty well in women's tennis like you said he's got a good squad again yeah so uh yeah the fall team's looking as strong as ever so um yeah not a pretty good start they, a lot of lot of stuff I mean, happening but you, you look at what happened last fall yeah and what can they do for an encore well i guess we'll find out yeah we'll find out but uh so far so good i think across the across the board so we're going to take a quick time out and we come back we'll have our round table segment and the uh, the tradition I think every year we've done this, guest yep. number one is always the Director of Athletics, Nick Bursick, to kind of get the State of the Union, if State you will. State of the Union address, yeah. And uh, talk a little bit about some of the, the good stuff that's happening on campus because there's a lot going on right yeah. now. And, and for yeah, it really is. athletically, it, it's it's good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, uh, the, the stadium's almost done. So. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll find out about <laughs> yeah, that. Well, that's and one thing we'll talk about. Get a timeline yeah. on that yeah. and a few other things, but it, it should be a good conversation. It'll be coming yep. up right after this break. You are watching Eye of the Swarm. Find your passion. Find your people. Find your purpose. Find your superior. We're back on the roundtable segment of this week's Eye of the Swarm, and as has become tradition on episode one of each year, we are happy to be joined by the Director of Athletics here at UW-Superior, Nick Bursick. And before we before we jump into the, the business at hand, you know, let's, uh, how was the summer? <laughs> uh, it's kind of what summer, right? Um, you know, we talk about it, I feel like, every year we're on it, and Welcome to another year of the podcast. Appreciate being guest number one. But, uh, yeah, we kind of talk about it every year. Of You really don't get much of a summer. Um, we do so much of our planning work, our budget work, uh, a lot of our procurement, ordering stuff to make sure we're ready for this upcoming year. So, uh, you know, people always ask us, you know, what's your summer It's your like? downtime, yeah, isn't it's it? Your downtime. Oh, God, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's not really that. Um, but doing all that work in the summer makes it, uh, possible for us to focus on our athletes and their experience when they get here in the fall. So uh, it went by quick. It always goes by quick. You always wish there was extra weeks, extra uh, months, or even a day or two to get out to the golf course or, you know, just even getting some time off. But uh, glad uh, we're here to fall. I, there's a lot more extra planning, I feel like, this year. Than <laughs> it's always funny because you, yeah. you, you suddenly realize – they're going to be here in two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I'm not ready for this. It was, uh, and I and, and knowing some a, a fair amount of what's been going on behind the scenes, I'd imagine the planning this summer. There was a, a lot of it. I mean, every year there's planning during mm -hmm. the summer. This year there was more than usual. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, yeah, we had some uh, moving dynamics this summer. It's fair to say, mm -hmm. with uh, a few of our fall sports and some facilities, uh, but all good things yeah. for us in the long run. Uh, presents us some short-term challenges that we got to work through, but think about where we could be in you know just a few weeks from now with an opening of a stadium. It could be pretty special. It's funny because I still actually have people ask if it's are you building this? Yeah. Have you not driven by it? There, there's yeah, a there's a show, there's a carpet there's out, bleachers there. out there. They're everything. putting bleachers yeah. up. Oh, so it's actually <laughs> happening. Yes, it is yeah. actually happening. Sometimes you have to point out the obvious. <laughs> people don't see the obvious. You know, that's one of the things that you learn when you work with the public a lot. Is that they just don't see what's right in front of them sometimes. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. I mean, I'm not trying to insult anyone's <laughs> intelligence, but yeah, it is happening. We're not. We're, this is not a dress rehearsal. This is the real thing. Right. This is the yeah. real thing. And you know, I go back to 2017 is when we actually started on this project in particular, uh, with the creation of our athletics recreation master plan from a facilities or university perspective, focused on facilities, um, and then where we are today. It took a long journey, but we're uh, excited about being able to be at a place where, yeah, carpets in. Bleachers are going in. The beams for the new video board are in. The video board gets delivered soon. Uh, the track is going to get poured now. Um, we're we're on the back end of the punch list, and very thankful to have Northern Interstate and some other uh, local companies helping us with this project. And it being a priority, and, and they know our kids are anxious to get on it, and uh, we're excited for those opportunities to lie ahead in the upcoming weeks yeah they've been practicing on they it. have been both teams have been yeah. practicing on it you know um, so there's all so, there's already yeah. that excitement of uh, this is really this is real i've gotten a chance mm -hmm. to walk the turf it's very nice it's very state-of-the-art um it actually does feel like an artificial grass 
Mm-hmm. You know, not so much like you don't notice so much the turf aspect of it because um, it has that kind of natural grass feel to it. Um, it's it's nice. It's, it's a forgiving kind of spongy surface, which is, I think, kind of good. It's going to play more like natural grass, too, yep. um, given certain, you know, I mean, up at NBC, the turf is a little bit more beat up, so it's not quite as smooth. You know, it doesn't have quite that, that true, like, artificial grass feel. This mm-hmm. one does. Mm-hmm. Yep. So... Yeah, yeah, the competitive surfaces in the stadium, that was our top priority of let's make sure we get those right. Um, and equally for us, it's the turf, but it's also the track. And we can start with the turf. And the turf itself, it took us a while to f- kind of figure out the exact spec, the exact blade, right, the yeah. fill, the amount of reveal we wanted. But we really wanted a surface that was going to play true like grass, yeah. um, but also have the safety components and some of the other components that you find in turf as well, too. So uh, I think we're excited in early indications from our kids. Right. It's a new new. It's a shiny new toy. It's a new toy. Um, It does need to get broken in and we'll continue to groom it. And we have a solid maintenance plan, too, to ensure um, the field plays as it does today in two, three years, four years, five years from now. That's going to be important to us as well, too. But, yeah, that that spec on the turf in particular was uh, took us a while to get drilled in. But think the coaches and those that were involved help us get to a good point and it's a good product i'm excited too to see the track go in um you know the track that we're gonna be getting is is really state of the art and, and is really from a performance perspective um one of the best services that our athletes can run on too so looking forward to that getting poured in the next coming week and uh really seeing our kids being able to get out there and test that surface and try that surface too and I think they'll be pleased. I, and the video board, that's, yeah. that's going to be a new little toy as well. Um, I it's, would a, call it's, it's not little. little. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, it, but I mean, you know, in, in the grand scheme, it's it's part of the big shiny yeah. toy, overall toy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's a first for us um, with the video board. So that's kind of inter- that's that's exciting. I think mm-hmm. uh, for for the athletes as well. There's a lot of opportunity to do like graphics and stuff down the line, not necessarily at the start, but. The, the door is open now for that possibility, so that's nice. Oh, I think there's a lot of trepidation with that. <laughs> I, I've said it from the beginning, from the first conversation of what about a video mm-hmm. board, and it's someone's got to run it, yeah. and, and yeah. We, we all have to know how to, how to operate it. And whew. Yeah, I know, I know you and, were... I, and from what I've heard, because the high school just put one in the gym, they mm-hmm. said the learning curve on that was pretty steep for them. Okay. So that, that makes me even more nervous yeah. <laughs> about yeah. things. And it, we haven't really seen any kind of specs or operation or operation anything for the software board or anything yeah, so yeah, for the board yeah so yeah. we're going to be drinking from a fire hose when that thing gets installed yeah I, uh. yeah and it definitely as we have encountered this year with the launch of yellow jacket tv and bringing streaming in-house too that's yeah that's a nice segue, <laughs> yeah, it's a nice going. segue. but you know i think for us we've always looked at how do we enhance the game day experience and the video board is one within the stadium that you know i think will allow us to do some special things when we host competition uh soccer and you know video and graphics but i also think about when we host outdoor track meets and some yep. of the unique things that we can do with that technology Um, And then I know our coaches are also excited from a training perspective, being able to uh, have access to the video board, to bring up video while they're actually on there, or to, uh, you know, Glenn and Tony for different timing components, right? Those are typically tools in training you don't have access to, but now with this investment that we're making, thanks to Synovus, we're going to be able to have that tool. Um, But, you know, it's a larger concept of i think some of the strategies and initiatives we're trying to pursue about updating the not updating enhancing the game day experience doing some things uh that is new and different for us and yeah it's a learning curve we're thankful to have a great team here that you know we're never shy in terms of taking on new ambitious things um sometimes we need our own check uh, here <laughs> yeah. and there too what do we have capacity yeah. for but yeah. uh it's always done with the intent of supporting the student athletes and their experience and finding new ways to be creative and in launching. So I know Yellow Jacket TV is is a new endeavor for us as well, and I think, you know, that's a start to something that can develop and really be an asset for us and our fans and student-athletes. We'll talk a little bit about that here in a couple of minutes. You brought up Synovus, and they were kind of the the driving force behind the purchase of the video board, and then they are uh, also the driving force behind Energy Zone. Yep. So talk about Energy Zone. Yeah, we're really excited, I think, 
when we move in here to the stadium, uh, our fan zone area that will be sponsored by Sonovas, I think that'll be something unique on Saturday home games for us where we can do an elevated experience um, for our fans. But also all of that translates to our student athletes and the game day atmosphere. You know, everyone wants to play in front of a full bleacher or a full stand. So hopefully with our fan zone, uh, thanks to the contribution and support of Sonovas, we'll be able to do some enhance things and we're excited to have that kind of roll out with the grand opening and it'll be something we continue to build upon and you know next year too when we have a full season at the stadium hopefully i'm sure we will learn through some things this year but um next year too in particular i think those fan zones hopefully will be a community draw uh something that will bring people to our games and enhance the game day experience and when you talk about fan zone yard games Oh yeah, other uh, <coughs> inflatables, oh. other other forms yep. of entertainment. Yeah. I uh, I think we got some creative things planned, um, and I think it'll all kick off uh, with the grand opening of the stadium too. And we'll try to find ways to continue to build it and make it a fun atmosphere. You know, I got two kids myself. I know what it's like to bring uh, little ones to a game, and uh, you need something to entertain them. So I think the fan zone will have both a mix of you know things for youth to do, but also a fun, inviting atmosphere for adults, college students, whatnot, to get ready and prep for uh, hopefully some good home competition. And originally on the schedule, the grand opening was supposed to be nine days from now. Yeah, that had to be adjusted because of you know wet weather in June, construction gets pushed back, whatever it is. So now. Grand opening. Grand opening is tentatively, although I think we're ready to confirm uh, Saturday the 12th, um, which is a home match for us against Minnesota Moore. Should be some great games for us too, uh, but excited for that date. And uh, that is the goal that we're going with. Um, we do have some milestones, but uh, again, thanks to our partners with Northern Interstate and, and some of the other subcontractors that are working on the stadium. They, they understand the importance of us being able to hit that milestone, getting our kids, our teams onto the surfaces and training and competing yet this fall. Um, and uh, we feel pretty confident, knock on wood, that we have really good weather for the next you know, two, three I was going to ask you if you put an order in on that weather. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we, we need that um, to allow the track to get poured properly and safely and um, be a premier surface for us as well too but all indications are is we should be able to hit that and our grand opening will be saturday the 12th of october so exactly a month out yeah exactly one month, month from so, today yeah one month from today i know um you know i think if you talk to the athletes especially the uh the soccer players not necessarily track and field i think track and field was pretty they know they're going to get on it so there isn't quite that trepidation because you know they're in their the athletes who do participate in cross country right now are busy, but they typically do not train on a track. So, you know, the track and field athletes, I think they know they have their indoor season and then by the outdoor season, they'll be ready to go regardless. So they're just sort of like, okay, well, we'll just take our time. Soccer players have been a little more antsy about it, but I mm -hmm. think that most of them are pretty excited just to be able to get out there and practice on it. I mean, a lot of them are just looking forward to going to practice and playing on the surface as is, you know, because yeah. like I said, the turf is in, they're starting to get uh, acclimated to a new service that they're going to be playing on here in a couple of weeks. Um, so, but yeah, it's going to be, a, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Um, you know, to see just, you know, what the layout's going to be. I mean, you and I are going to have to navigate a whole new press box <laughs> as will you. Another comm yeah. set up. Yep. Yeah. Another comm set up. So, um, but yeah, overall it's just, whenever you open up a new facility, it's always a lot of fun. It's yeah. always an exciting time, no matter what, you know, and the fact that this one is right on campus, people can walk there. They don't have to, we don't have to haul gear. We don't yeah. have to haul, Equipment, yeah. we don't have to haul, yeah, you know, tickets and stuff across town or right to yeah. another state. So yeah, yeah exactly. It's so it's exciting. Yeah, it's it's, a, it's it'll be a fun time. Uh, getting into Yellow Jacket TV, uh, you and I and um, John and some other people have been talking about this for a while. For people who don't know, um, that the possibility and the the reality of Yellow Jacket TV has been coming for a few years. I mean, mm -hmm. you and I, the three of us, have had pointed conversations about this topic before it even became a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that it, it was tough letting go of IFAN. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit, maybe. I don't know. But anyway, um, I think that the transition, just from my perspective, and this is some of the stuff that we talked about in the open with the transition that's been happening, has gone pretty darn smoothly, mm -hmm. all things considered. It could have been a lot worse, I'll put it that way. Um, but 
when did I, I will ask you this, Nick, because you would know this better than anyone. When did conversations start about the UMAC network? Because Yellow Jacket TV being part of the UMAC network. Yeah. I mean, when was when did the like, when did conversations start in earnest about making this a reality? It's a good question. Um, you know, I would probably go back to conference networks have been something that have been developed really over the past five years. I know some conferences, and, and especially at a Division One, Division Two, some of that has happened. You know for decades now, but really Division Three conferences, you saw those start to really emerge over the past five years. The UMAC in particular, um, you know, has been a point of conversation for us for a while, um, but it also aligned, we, we felt that, and the conference felt that it it's an opportunity that aligns with the rebranding that the conference just did. So okay. really felt that those two complement each other, build upon each other, and ultimately was how uh, things rolled out to be at all in alignment um, where the rebrand was done and also the introduction of a new network where people can see all UMAC games um, on one platform, which I think is pretty cool. And and again, I know we're not alone within particularly Division Three of having a conference network, but I think Yellow Jacket TV in particular, I think there are some unique things that we're looking forward to once we you know get our feet wet, also move into new facilities, um, being able to have just a little bit more flexibility with the broadcasting and the systems that we will have now, um, I think it'll give our viewers a, a unique experience and um, you know things from maybe adding multiple cameras to games, but also being able to stream um, you know sports like tennis and track and field a little bit more consistently. I, th I think those will be things that hopefully student athletes appreciate, and particularly parents and family members and. Uh, those that are at a distance that can't always get to our home contest to be able to tune in and watch. So um, I think it'll be a great investment. It's certainly something new for us. So as with that, you know, it does have its learning curves and challenges. But uh, again, I go back to we got a great team uh, of individuals that are helping oversee that broadcast and making the transition. And um, I know our broadcast will just continue to build upon each other and get better and better over time, too. It's been an interesting experience because I'm I was now I'm at the forefront of it because I've done a, a, a more than a few games now on Yellow Jacket TV and I think you know um, there are challenges involved. I remember you you know you we talked in June you and I did uh, about what are we going to need in terms of staffing and equipment and 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 mm -hmm. the expenses also that come along with that. How many cameras do we want at certain events? How are we going to set this up? You know how many different kits do we need? How much staff you know in terms of uh, on, on game days where things overlap because that happens quite a bit, especially during the fall, you know, especially last week. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I know it's a significant investment as well. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but I, from a broadcaster's perspective, I think it's been done very professionally, um, so far. And I think we're taking the right approach of building a nice foundation before we try to go and do too much. Mm -hmm. Um, because that's, you know, you want to see what you can execute at the start and, and do it on a regular mm -hmm. basis without difficulty. Uh, you don't want to try to get in over your head, and I think sometimes you can get in over your head a little bit on stuff like this where you try to do too much at the beginning. Um, and for me, um, I've been through this process already with UMD because UMD is also part of the NSIC network. Bulldog mm -hmm. Productions does their games through, NS through the NSIC network, and that's how we started. We started out pretty basic. We wanted to see what we can, what can we do now that we can repeat mm -hmm. and that the staff can repeat and that we can do on a regular basis, and then you build from there. And now we've gotten quite intricate with it. So there are... Uh, there are other opportunities down the road, but um, yeah, I mean, it's a thing now. You know, it, it's it's how broadcasts are now being brought to people now. It's no longer just about radio, um, you know, sports broadcasting like it used to be. Right uh, now, you you know, the, the the streaming component now is so much to the forefront now that the vast majority of all sports now come from a streaming format. I think mm -hmm. pretty much, and so that's I, I I'm excited about it. I think it's been great so far. I don't know what you guys' early returns are. I mean, I have not viewed them. I haven't watched any of them, obviously, because I'm always brought You're on them. Because I'm on them, and I'm, <laughs> I'm doing the play-by-play. -play. But based on what I've seen so far, it's, it's, been, mm -hmm. it's been pretty good so far. And like you said, we have a great team. Mm -hmm. We're lucky. We have a really good staff that's working on this behind the scenes and yep. knows how to, get, how to execute it. Um, but I also understand that the conference has given, I don't want to say broad latitude, but given some, some freedoms to the schools to see how far they want to go. Um, and I haven't watched too many other home events. I watched a little bit of Bethany Lutheran to see what they're doing. Um, but it, you know, it, it's, it's interesting. Are there like 
base guidelines though? Are there like base structures that have to be met? Are there like base, um, I don't know, requirements for the broadcast for each school? The, mm-hmm. I, I'm guessing that there are. Are there? Yeah, I mean, I'll kick it to you, Garves, too. Uh, the conference did develop a kind of an expectations. Um, I don't want to say bare minimum expectations, but, okay. you know, a level of standard that I think okay. the conference mm-hmm. wants all broadcasts to be at. Okay. Uh, I think internally for us, we we took that list, and, you know, also then we have our expectations okay. and our standards that I think we've done a lot, certainly from a creative perspective, a graphical perspective of, you know, our standard is what it is today. And right. I think we want to see our broadcast continue to build and develop and, and ensure alignment there. Okay. Um, it is new. Um, when with that, you know, there's always learning curves. But, right. um, yeah, I do think the conference developed that with uh, the hope that there would be consistency. Okay. No matter where, you know, our teams may go, that right. our parents can tune in and still see a good broadcast. Well, the reason why I bring it up is because the NSIC has, like, base requirements <clears throat> that they mm-hmm. each school has to meet for a home stream. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm imagining that <coughs> just about every league, whether it's the WIAC, the MIAC, NSIC, whatever level it is, Division Two, right. Division Three, Division One, even, uh, with the Big Ten Network, um, there are base requirements when you're going to put something on that on that platform that right. have to be met yep. to to meet the standard of what we're expecting here. Yeah, and I mean there there is there are some guidelines, but look when we looked at that, it was well we're going to do all this anyway. Yeah, you know, so we we. We knew for it, us it, it didn't really yeah. af- affect us that much because we knew everything that was on that list we were already talking about anyway. Yeah, we were yeah. going to do all that you anyway. Know, it can yeah. get a little tricky when you have three home events going on at the same right. time. Yeah. But that's why they have in there that we'd like you to have commentary, but it's not mandatory. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, but it's make sure there's a camera on the scoreboard. Make sure you have a score bug. You know, yeah, you don't have to like have that. replay. You don't have, there's certain things yeah. you don't have to do. Okay. Down the road, do I say that changing? Probably. Yeah, yeah. You yeah know, once everybody gets their feet wet. But I, I, I yeah. think we're going to be far enough ahead of it where yeah. even when they do update that, we're probably already going to be doing those things mm-hmm. anyway. Well, and yeah. that was one of the great things that Holden did when we were initially setting up is he talked to Huddle, got like their, what is the most we can do? What is the highest resolution yeah. we can run at? Yeah. And we made sure, okay, we, we're going to be in position to do that. So our our, our broadcast is always going to be top quality. Yeah, yeah. And this is where we're lucky to have the team that we have um, because we've got – you know, four or five individuals behind the scenes that people don't know about that are really clued in and know how this works. Um, I know not all the schools in the league have that. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a little bit of a steeper climb for them. Um, But we're lucky because our staff does do that. And it just sort of falls into us being, you know, one of those schools, one of the, one of the, I dare say a leader in terms of social media and streaming technology. Uh, We have a really, really dynamite team. And we've talked about Mm -hmm. this before that we're lucky as a school our size has that. Mm-hmm. Uh, most schools don't, mm-hmm. but we do. So for us to take a full advantage of it uh, is pretty cool. And I know there's also a possibility that it won't, it'll expand beyond athletics down the road. If things work out, you know, the way that we, mm-hmm. we want, we, we can also do other things, you know, stream other things that are going on on campus, you know, whether it be a theater event, graduations, uh, speakers, whatever else mm-hmm. it may be. All that stuff is up is also a possibility down the road. So um, it's very cool. It's a very exciting time. Uh, between the stadium and the and Yellow Jacket TV, it's been it's been very cool. You know, it's it's a good opportunity too academically. We have a multimedia yep. journalism yep. major on this campus, and we're giving that major hands on mm-hmm. experience for yep. the, for those students. So we'll have students working on it from behind the scenes as well. And yeah, yeah, yeah a lot of people don't realize it, but athletics um, for our student employees, uh, we're one of the largest, if not the largest, employer now on campus. I think it's so, right behind Residence Life. Yeah, so okay. we provide a ton of opportunities, and you know those now range from game day operations, selling tickets, to working stats table, to now being on streaming. broadcast, streaming. Um, you know, things to being an office worker, a front office worker, um, helping with laundry duties, right? The, the possibilities are truly endless. And um, I think, you know, we've done everything now from student experience or student employment to experiential learning to internships for students. And, you know, I think those are things that we all have benefited from our time here when we were students, right, of f- having opportunities to get involved, to get engaged. And, you know, I think we're intentionally trying to find opportunities of how can we help the next generation of students that may one day work in athletics or, you know, may work in business, but this is relevant experience that they can translate 
all of that makes a difference, right? It's just not about our 365 athletes that are competing for us. It's about you know, the other 100 students that are also working for us that we want to provide them with a great experience. So, yeah, these things all overlap, um, but it allows us to make a little bit of a larger impact on our students. Let's talk a little bit about just the, the state of the department as well, because yeah. we're coming off of a year where Holy cow. We had to make some room in the trophy case. Yeah, there were a lot of there's a mean, lot of hardware in the it case. Was, from it was last a pretty year, historic yeah. year last year. Yeah, you know, I've told our facilities folks we have a good problem on our hands of I don't know where we're putting the next trophy. Um, and that's a credit to our student athletes, our coaches, our staff that are all committed to helping our student athletes achieve high outcomes. And with that, yeah, we, we had a really good year <laughs> last year in terms of the amount of championships, being able to win the Conference Cruise Award again, uh, but then also seeing the personal accolades of our coaches, our student athletes. It's all a credit, again, going back to the work that they put in and um, our commitment to helping our kids become champions. So, <clears throat> yeah, our banquet too, you know, I always get asked about that of, man, how long is your banquet? As, and I, as you long know, as I tell it has people, to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a good problem when we have to celebrate it for as long as we do, but um, it, it's, Again, it's these are fun things. These are good yeah. problems to have, and things. Uh, I think for us, it's it's easy for us to progress to the next task or think about what's the next thing we want to accomplish. But it's also important for us to take a step back and actually look at all that we've accomplished and all that our student athletes have earned, and take a lot of pride in it. Yeah, there are a lot of banners hanging over there on the field house right now <laughs> that have added numbers to them. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially after last year, what was it? It ended up twelve, I think, didn't it? Was it twelve titles? Oh, no, regular season plus like two or three uh, conference no, I, tournaments. I think it was 15. 15, 15. total championships. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Yeah, so I, if you add up the regular season plus the tournaments, it's, yeah, like, I think it was 15. Mm -hmm. Yep, 15. And then, you know, we did also – every season, uh, you know, I don't think always has to accumulate in a trophy. That That is the goal, right? We want to see our teams win championships and put a trophy in the trophy case. But sometimes it's about making progress and allowing our teams to, to achieve the next step, the next milestone too. So, you know, to see some of our teams advance to championship games, right, that, that's a sign of their progression and their development. Yep. And hopefully this season in particular, you see some of those teams now come home with tournament trophies and getting into NCAA play. You know, I think baseball, men's basketball, uh, you know, you sport even like volleyball. They've made the championship. Now it's, let's take that next yep. step, that next hurdle. And, you know, so sometimes there's a process to growing and learning and winning, and, you know, it's a part of it too. So uh, <clears throat> even for the sports that may not have brought a trophy home, there's a lot to look at back on and be a lot of pride and yep. um, things that I think we should continue to look forward on that – can only build us for future success you talked about growth you talk about building so before we let you go here because i know you're up against it schedule wise a lot of talk about facilities yep. <clears throat> and the first one is finally not done but Almost we done. know it's going to happen because yeah. it's, it's right out there there's been a lot of talk about additional facilities indoor mm -hmm. field houses uh, baseball softball can you give any kind of an update on that yeah uh it's again it kind of goes back to 2017 when we started that master planning process of really assessing what our current facilities are what the bare minimum kind of needs to be and then what is the ideal to really position us for long-term stability growth all of that um, so the stadium is project one right it, it is phase one but intentionally we want to be clear it is phase one right. we hope to achieve more phases to our overall plan and see more of our facilities be developed and be enhanced so uh, we're working on funding solutions that, you know funding always is the primary driver behind uh, achieving our vision but we're working on funding solution for a number of our facilities the indoor turf field house is one we know from a training perspective uh, as much as we need our athletes to have venues to compete, they, it's e also equally important. They got to find some place to train. And with our climate, indoor facilities uh, are a premium, particularly for our turf uh, sports, you know, baseball, softball, soccer, um, future opportunities for us to just enhance their training 
and having true indoor space would, would be a great benefit to them. So that's where the turf field house comes into play. If we can get that project to construction, you know, I think that enhances those sports. But it also has a trickle down impact because when you balance those sports, provide them a training opportunity, it also provides greater balance to other sports. So, you know, our current field house right now, we try to jam in, you know, six to eight to ten teams in winter to try and get time in there to train and, and to get ready for their season by taking some teams out and putting them in a new venue that also then frees up this venue to be more accessible more impactful for some of our current teams so in particular the likes of track and field tennis stand to benefit by the turf field house going in because now we'll have greater consistency right. greater access for them in the field house uh, our current field house so uh, you know i think that's one that has a pretty big trickle down impact of benefiting all of our student athletes in some capacity not just those that will primarily train there <clears throat> the other projects yet yeah, we know uh, you know I know in particular having been a part of and affiliated with those programs we need to find a solution for baseball softball too and it's, it has been a priority for us in trying to find opportunities in which we can get funding there uh, we, we have a funding path that we're exploring right now and hopefully we can uh, achieve that which would allow for those facilities to be built that kind of is why the stadium was phase one we needed to relocate our track to free up space for future baseball softball fields uh, unfortunately the ted which is where <laughs> i played and coached at uh, just has too many upfront challenges to ever be converted into a usable baseball space so um, locating the baseball fields and softball fields uh, by westman i think there's some synergies there that we gain even with the school district from a community perspective uh, but also helps build kind of a second athletic corridor down there mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then the equally important to us is tennis um, our tennis courts when we reinstated or added back tennis um, <clears throat> we knew that our current four courts was kind of a band-aid um, and that <clears throat> long term we would need to build new courts and, and have new facilities and we're exploring funding opportunities there as well to to build six new courts that would actually sit between the wellness center and the stadium really okay. help build kind of a nice corridor there uh, as an athletics recreation venue uh, for the community and for us too so a lot in the work uh, <laughs> i will always go back to funding always helps make the vision and the dream a reality um, and <clears throat> i think you know the cool thing that we're seeing right now with the stadium coming online is you're starting to see the impact it's going to have on our students right and we know that if we're able to achieve other facilities that it's going to have a broader impact too and uh, I look forward to the day where I can meet with those teams and tell them that, you know, we're going to be doing this or, or we're going to be pursuing these projects for them. Um, so if anyone is out there that would love to... <laughs> Got it to, burning a hole in your pocket. <laughs> that would love to talk to us. You know, we, we always, whether it's a big donation or a small donation, right, everything adds up. Everything makes an impact. Um, people are always amazed what $500 can do mm -hmm. from an athletics standpoint to benefit student athletes. You know, $500 helps us fund our fueling station for two weeks. You know, the fueling station's been important to us. Larger gifts, yeah, obviously could help with facilities or enhancements or some other things too, but everything makes a contribution. So I'll give a shout out to our Champions Club, <laughs> and our official booster club of the department. You know, it's always a great opportunity for us to give back to support our student athletes. And um, we, we always have needs and we always have a vision of where we want to go and what we want to do. And it's all rooted back to our student athletes and their experience. Well said. It's a good way to end it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what all of this is about, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, whether it's Yellow Jacket TV, us doing this podcast, uh, doing games on the radio, you know, just having a home facility. It's all about just having the experience for the student athletes and their families, that they have a good experience at UWS. That's uh, And if it's a good yeah. enough one, then it, it trickles it, down. It comes the other, you know, it'll come yeah. back to you in the Champions Club five yep. to ten years from now. Yeah, you know? exactly, exactly. So, um yeah, I mean that—that's really what it, it's all about, um, you know. And I, I had the opportunity to uh, to uh, meet some of the the uh, families of the men's soccer players this past week, and uh, um, you know just how grateful they are for the work that we put in, the things that we do, because uh, not everyone does what we do, and uh, not every school does it the way that we do it, and uh, they're just they're 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 thrilled with with what we do and the opportunities that we present, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's what really it's all about, you know. If I can get 
families in the UK who are staying up till one or two in the morning to watch their, you know, their son or daughter play, you know, soccer and give them a, a present experience listening and watching and, and their kids also, uh, that kind of makes my day. Yep. It really then pretty puts a smile on my face. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I got some, uh, some reinforcement yeah. on that this week and I, I was really happy about it, but that, that's why we do what we do mm-hmm. in case anyone ever has a real question as to why we do what we do. That's why. Yep. Yep. hundred percent. So, yep. So that's all, that's all I have to add to that, John. <laughs> uh, okay, Mr. Gump. Yeah, Mr. That's Gump. All I have to that's say all I have to say that. about that. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it's just it was very reaffirming, and that's that's why we do what we do. Mm-hmm. So, and that'll do it for this week's episode of I Have the Swarm. We want to thank Director of Athletics Nick Bursick for joining us. For Nick, for the Big Sound, Matt Johnson. I am John Garver, and thank you for watching. I Have the Swarm. Mm-hmm.